Good morning, viewers all over the world. We welcome you in today's Daily Dynamite, a youth devotional manual. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we worship your holy name because there is no one like you. We thank you for imparting our lives and our purpose with your truth. Open our eyes to see the opportunities around us to serve you and to grow in your blessings and favor. Bless our time together. Focus our minds. Soften our hearts. Make our time together count for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Today being Tuesday, 8th August. 2023, we are going to deliberate on a topic that says God's way of salvation. God's way of salvation. Let's read Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, we are going to start reading from verse 1. What advantage then is there in being a Jew? Or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way, first of all, they have been entrusted with the very ways of God. What if some did not have faith? With their lack of faith nullified God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true, and every man a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us. I am using a human argument. Certainly not. If that we are so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as we are being slanderously reported as saying, and as some claim that we say, let us do evil, that that good may result, their condemnation is devised. What shall we conclude then? Why are we, are we any better? Not at all. We have already met the, chair, the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. They are the poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are shifted to shed blood. Wrongs and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. But now, a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known 
to which the law and the prophet testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. To all who believe, there is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his by Christ Jesus. God presents him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so as to be just and that one who justify those who have faith in Jesus. We are then is boasting. It is excluded on what principle? on that of observing the law no but on that of faith for we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law is god the god of jews only is he not the god of gentiles too yes of gentiles too since there is only one god who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. Do not then nullify the law by this faith. Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. Hallelujah. Let's see the anchor verse, verse 22. The, the anchor verse, verse 22 says... This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference. Hallelujah. All right. Now, looking at this Romans chapter 3, you understand that this particular passage starts with a question and answer season. As if Paul was discussing with some opponents they we are busy asking them now we understand from the passage that the people asking these questions are the jews they are telling or asking paul since they are jews that is their own mentality they maintain the law of moses and they think that maintaining the law will take them to heaven or they will escape the judgment of god by maintaining the law by keeping the commandments now at this point they are asking Paul if God will judge the whole world then being the Jews that they are maintaining despite that they are maintaining the law will God also judge them are they, did they not have a special a, a, a part or place in heaven why can't God uh, uh, have mercy on them or why can't God escape his judgment on them? Now they see themselves as the most righteous. They regard the Gentiles as the sinful nation, as the sinful world. This is exactly what is happening in our time these days. Some people, they believe that they are Christian, that once they accept Jesus Christ. Now, okay, now, you know, uh, uh, being a Christian is quite different from being a born again Christian. There is Two, they are, the, the two are quite different. You can be born as a Christian. When you are born, your father or your mother, from the what they are practicing, maybe they normally pray every morning and you realize that now you are a Christian. You, you, are, you are born into a family or a Christian family. Now that is a, a different thing, being a born again Christian. That is a different thing for being someone that is maintaining the law, the Ten Commandments of God. That's why some people today, they think that being a church goer will make them to go heaven. Or being a Christian will make them to escape the wrath of God. And that's why in churches today, you see those people that call themselves believers misbehaving, thinking that they are covered at the last day. 
and Paul is trying to explain to these people that for God, for, for them to obtain the salvation of God, they must maintain the rules and regulation. They must maintain the commandments. You know, God is a merciful God. He's a loving father and also a God of justice. Anybody that can accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior is the only person that will receive this salvation we are talking about this morning. Hallelujah. Now, God knows the way he saved his people. Paul responded by saying that they, in fact, hold greater privilege and more knowledge because they were the first people with which God shared his wisdom. Because they're, they're, they're asking. They want to know if they have a special place in heaven. If God can skip or overlook them being Jews or Israelites and judge others. And, you know, when we are talking about the God of heaven, we are not talking about the God that criticizes or God that, uh, 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 that divides or have any division in his life. Everybody is equal. He will judge all man equally. Whether you are a Christian or not. Whether you are a priest or not. Whether you are an evangelist or not. The only people that can obtain this salvation we are talking about this morning are the people that do what the Lord loves. Hallelujah. Now today when you look around you will see so many atrocities so-called Christians are committing in our society. Some Christians, you hardly trust them when it comes to business. You hardly trust them when it comes to contract. You hardly trust them. Some people you trust can do one or two things that will demoralize your trust on them. And they also call themselves Christians. And sometimes whenever they are acting or whenever they are speaking men looking at their countenance you will say ah, these people are the ones that owns heaven because of what they are doing because of what they believe some people today they believe depending the way they are converted and they told them that in as much as you are Christian you will go to heaven no matter what you are doing in some churches today, that is what they are believing. That is the ideology. That is the, 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 some messages so-called pastors are spreading. Trying to destroy the minds of the people. Telling them whenever you accept Jesus, or whenever you are a Christian, immediately you start coming to our church. Whatsoever you do, God will overlook it. That is a great lie. It's a fat lie. The only people that will receive this God's salvation are the people that are called, are the people that accept Jesus Christ as the Lord or as their Lord and personal Savior. That is why God sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary because of our sins. The Bible says, All have sinned and God shot the glory of God. Yes. Everybody is a sinner in the sight of God. But what qualifies you to receive this salvation is when you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. There are so many preachers today, but they are preaching the word, but they have not accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. They know the word. They are like signboard. They direct people to heaven, but they are at that particular spot. If care is not taken, they are going to hellfire. The best thing that will happen to you as a youth is to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You know yourself. Sometimes we talk, we talk about ourselves, but let me tell you, the only people that knows you, there are three people that knows you. Number one is yourself. You know yourself. Number two is God. God knows you. And number three is Satan. Satan knows you. Whenever you are doing the will of God, you know. Whenever you are practicing pretense, you know. In churches today, our pews are full of pretenders. They pretend to be a Christian. They pretend to be born again Christian. 
But outside the church, they are doing worse things than the Gentiles. The people they regard as the Gentiles. I don't know the one you are practicing, the things you are doing in the secret. It's time for you to accept Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, it's time. You have a long time to accept him. You have a very long time to accept him. Jesus is ever ready to accept you whenever you come. No matter your sin. No matter what you have done. There are some people who might be saying, I have did this, I have done that, I have committed so many atrocities. Can God accept me? If I come back to him, can he receive me back? Yes. Jesus can receive you back. God can still accept you if only you trust in him. If only you depend on him. If only you can take him as your Lord and personal Savior. Hallelujah. Now, food for thought. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That is our food for thought. Prayer. I want you to pray with me anywhere you are. Say after me, O oh Lord, show me the way of salvation and keep me through till the end. That this particular prayer should be your daily prayer. O oh Lord, show me the way of salvation and keep me through till the end. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today. We ask you to come and take absolute control. Change the mind that hear this word. Let them meditate on this word and most especially let them be the doers of the word rather than the hearers of the word so that at the last your name alone will be highly exalted in the mighty name of jesus christ amen i hope you are blessed by the word join us tomorrow on the daily dynamite